right? Well, after the videos came out, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger was one of the Republicans who pounced on the ACORN issue as if ACORN was a real threat to the Republic. On the basis of the fact that some of the ACORN offices where O'Keefe's filming took place uh, were in California, Schwarzenegger asked California Attorney General Jerry Brown to investigate. Mr. Brown did investigate. And as an official law enforcement investigation, he actually got a hold of the unedited O'Keefe tapes, the raw footage, before it was cut down to make the point that Mr. O'Keefe and his conservative activist patrons and Fox News wanted to make. And when you look at that unedited footage, well, what ho, lo and behold. Attorney General Brown describes O'Keefe's pimp video as severely edited and says that the unedited videotapes show, quote, that things are not always as partisan zealots portray them through highly selective editing of reality. Quote, at, among the things made clear, he says, by the unedited tapes are things like an acorn staffer calling the cops on Mr. O'Keefe uh, and the fact that Mr. O'Keefe didn't go into the acorn offices dressed as a pimp. Quote, at the beginning and end of the internet videos, Mr. O'Keefe was dressed as a 1970s superfly pimp. But in his actual taped sessions with Acorn workers, he was dressed in a shirt and tie. He never claimed he was a pimp. So the whole premise of the attack on Acorn was false. This guy dressed up like a pimp and went into the Acorn offices and they gave him straight up advice like that was normal. Actually, no, he was dressed up like a law student and they called the cops on him. Oh, well, no harm, no foul, right? Well, no. Uh, quoting from the Attorney General again, the original storm of publicity created by O'Keefe's videotapes was instrumental in ACORN's subsequent denunciation in Congress, a sudden tourniquet on its funding, and the organization's eventual collapse. So ACORN's now gone. And it's an afterthought that the attack on them that killed them off was totally made up. Bogus. Bullpucky. You know what else was bullpucky? Climate gate. That made-up controversy promoted by climate change deniers and promoted on Fox News Channel that British scientists who provided evidence that climate change was real had been caught making up the data. A lot of people are changing their minds about the theory of man-made global warming on the heels of a major scientific scandal concerning researchers and their behavior. The leaked email scandal known by some who actually read papers that report the truth Climate Gate. Continuing fallout from Climate Gate isn't about to save America's economy. Hacked emails from scientists preaching global warming found to be full of hot air. The climate change emails uncovered at the University of East Anglia shed serious doubts on the science of global warming. These are the types of things that maybe you're not hearing from the mainstream media. And one of the things about whether or not climate change and everything that's going on <clears> with Climate Gate will actually get out to the general public, we don't know. Thank God we have Fox. I don't mean to rain on all their excitement here, but it turns out that ClimateGate uh, is total bullpucky as well. Little notice news this week that the British House of Commons officially investigated the controversy and found that no one misrepresented any data. Nobody lied. Nothing about the supposed bombshell climate gate scandal at all challenges the scientific consensus that global warming is happening, that it is induced by human activity. So which did you hear more about? That climate change deniers had uncovered some huge scandal about some climate change data being faked? Or that when responsible, uninterested parties looked into the supposed scandal, they found that no one was faking anything? Did you hear more about there being some scandal about Acorn giving prostitution advice to a right-wing activist dressed up like a pimp? Or did you hear more about the fact that when responsible, uninterested people looked into it, they found that it was all made up, down to the part where the guy wasn't actually even dressed up like a pimp? What we're dealing with here is the unmooring of politics from facts. The activists pushing the ACORN scandal knew it was fake. After all, they faked it. <laughs> but it made a political impact anyway, so they win, right? The climate gate scandal, not an actual challenge to the homogenous consensus of decades of climate science, but it could have a political impact, so go for it. It might work. It's the triumph of fake politics. Outrage or, or advantage gleaned from stuff that's not real. And who cares if it's not real, if it has a political impact? When Republicans complain that President Obama is using recess appointments, they're faking it. Because if they really had a real concern about recess appointments, they wouldn't have been fine with them when George W. Bush used them. The recess appointments outrage is bull. Republicans are faking their outrage over there being an individual mandate in health reform, too. It's a Republican idea. Republicans are faking their outrage over terrorism suspects being read their Miranda rights. They had no problem with that when it was done by the previous administration. That fake outrage is bull. 
Same goes with the Republican outrage over civilian trials for terrorism suspects. If you weren't outraged over the shoe bomber getting a civilian trial, that's proof that your purported outrage over the underpants bomber getting a civilian trial is bull. Republicans are faking their outrage over the stimulus. You can tell because when they go to their home districts, they admit that it's working great. Their Washington outrage over the stimulus bill is bull. The anti-acorn crusade was bull. Climate gate was bull. Repealing health reform is bull. The lawsuits against health reform are bull. The death panels, bull. The president's secretly foreign and doesn't have a birth certificate, bull. Fear of the census is bull. Supposed threats to end the Second Amendment, bull. The claim that thousands of armed IRS agents are going to be stormtroopers to enforce health reform, it's bull. The administration taking away the right to go fishing, it's bull. Scott Brown saying I'm running against him is even bull. <laughs> it's made up. It's bull. It's bull. It's not real politics. Let them eat fake. These are not real problems to worry about and work on as a country, right? But there's more bang for the political buck to make stuff up like this than to try to debate real problems in the real world. So just go with the bull. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports today that billboards against Obama are popping up in the Atlanta area right now. They say things like, stop Obama's socialism, and now it's personal. CNN has hired a contributor who said on his radio show yesterday that he'd pull a shotgun on any census worker who came to his home. A group calling itself the Guardians of Free Republics has sent threatening letters to dozens of governors telling them to resign from office or else. Dissent is not the aberration in a democracy. Dissent is the norm. Our political vitality depends on dissent. No one expects that a president is going to have the whole country agree with his actions and his priorities. Nobody expects Americans to share the same political opinions. But has there ever been a time when we shared so few political facts? Let's argue. Let's have the great American debate about the role of government and the best policies for the country. It's fun. It's citizenship. It's activism. It makes the country better when we have those debates. And your country needs you. It needs all of us. But two things disqualify you from this process. You can't threaten to shoot people, and you have to stop making stuff up. Yesterday, the crew aboard the U.S. Navy guided missile frigate, the USS Nicholas, arrested and imprisoned five pirates way out in the Indian Ocean, out near the Seychelles Islands. The last Somali pirate we took into custody last year, you might recall, is uh, on trial in New York now. Others have been sent to Kenya to face trial. Even though the pirates are from Somalia, they can't really be sent home to Somalia to face trial because Somalia hasn't actually had a functioning government for almost 20 years. So last night when we were talking about the USS Nicholas, I speculated that at least while the USS Nicholas is still at sea, the pirates would remain in custody on the boat. They would remain in boat jail. That's right, I said boat jail. Beat saying, you know, thingy with the deal where the bad guys are kept on the big Navy ship. <laughs> But according to uh, what appears to be everyone, uh, boat jail is actually called the brig. People emailed us and tweeted us and posted at Matto blog and yelled at me on the street and basically had a very good time making fun of me for saying uh, boat jail. So um, we looked into it. <clears throat> I have here the Oxford English Dictionary. Ready? Okay, right. <clears throat> brig, one. Quote, a two-masted square-rigged ship, typically having an additional lower fore and aft sail on the gaff and a boom to the main mast. Two, a prison, especially on a warship. Mm. So it looks like the origin of the word is an abbreviation for the word brigantine. Uh, and finally, also see boat jail. So maybe we weren't actually wrong at all to call it a boat jail. Just to be sure, we dispatched our crack Rachel Maddow show naval research team, emphasis on crack, to ask the experts whether it's brig or it's boat jail. Here's what we found. Boat jail. I'll take naval lexicography for 400, Alex. Boat jail. Definitely boat jail. It's a boat jail. Duh. I was in a movie called Boat Jail with Charlie Sheen. It's definitely Boat Jail. I Boat Jail, it be called. Worst two years of my life. Brick, the Boat Jail. And it's aluminium, pasta, and garage. What is Boat Jail? Boat Jail. Boat Jail! <laughs> Experts. 
empirical evidence that while brig may be a technical term for the prison aboard a naval vessel, the Rachel Maddow Show is going to stick with our experts and we're going to stick with boat jail forever, no matter what anybody else says.